Hi, my name is Gary Johnson, and I'm a science teacher at Saigon South International School in Ho Chi Minh City. And what I'm going to be doing is walking you through this awesome add-on that is really improved the functionality of how I'm using Google Forms with this for assessment tools, uh, and it's called Super Quiz. And so I have a Google Form here that I just used uh, to do a little formative assessment to see how my kids have been learning uh, concepts of the last three lessons. We had three lessons, Introduction to the Atom. Um, organizing the elements and uh, also metals and you know whenever you make a Google form it automatically makes a spreadsheet of the responses which you see kind of here in front of us but what super quiz does that I think is really awesome is it creates these little tabs at the bottom that really improve um, the functionality of this and really combine a lot of elements of other scripts I think all into one tool which is absolutely dynamite so I'm just gonna click on this I've, I've seen only one other tutorial on this um, and it was a private video and I'd like to actually start with how how it looks like when as a teacher these these things come in and like you know what is it what does it do and then I'll also kind of walk you through the process from scratch so anyways here's all my responses they've all trickled in and I'm gonna click on this right and wrong column and uh, if you look right here this is um, this is kinda like a big sheet of how everyone in the class did and if you see there's like these ones, the ones are for students that got the question correct and then the zeros if they didn't. And the great thing about this is, that is it collates in real time. So it's unlike, for example, Flubrew is really, really uh, a great add-on to use. But the problem with Flubrew is that you have to run it only after all the responses come in. These come in and they're automatically assessed in real time. Uh, and also like Flubrew, you see patterns. So for example, looking at this, I can say, oh, it looks like, you know, this last question, question 10, and question number 4 are what the, the class kind of struggled with, but it looks like most of the class is pretty secure on 1, 2, 3, and 9. So you'll see that, and it's automatically graded in real time. The percentages are all over here, so you don't actually have to do any grading. Um, it also shows you results as an entire class. And this also is kind of like the, the Flubrew feature that is uh, made a little bit better. That for example, it actually tells you like what percentage of students got this correct, and it looks like most students got most of these correct. It looks like question four, six, um, ten were were questions that I might want to teach um, to a large group. It also gives you a list of those students. So this next tab, it automatically collates. For example, to the side here, um, what are all the students that in that incorrectly got the, their? I'm sorry, probably not the right word that, that that got this question incorrect so if you look at here it says like you know that this, a lot of students got this last question correct um, not so much here on number nine number number one number three but um, that's very interesting um, the, the really cool feature I love about this is the auto feedback configuration and the auto feedback configuration allows you to set certain parameters um, that for example since my, my quiz here is on three topics um, I wanted to give some specific feedback if students were not making that standard in a certain topic. So we made some models of atoms and uh, we also have a periodic table up in the front of the classroom and our, our, a lot of our questions for our metals are pulled off a metals lab and I might want to be a little more specific about the kind of feedback that I have there. I can also have some follow-up questions if I want to do that as well. I can also um, dictate what sort of level or grade if I want to do like beginning or introducing developing or I want to do like you know, a letter grade and maybe I want to have some adjective descriptors. This, th this colorful boxes might look a little, put some people off, um, but uh, don't worry, I'll walk through the process a little bit later. And uh, if you look here, it just says don't edit anything in yellow, so just leave those as is, but I'll walk through the process later. The response feedback is a column, like once the students have uh, submitted that, it's kind of a spreadsheet of the responses that all those students would get. So you see here, um, for example, everything is automatically um, kind of collated for the students. Now like this student like here, um, he got 10 out of 10 correct. So, you know, there's not a lot of descriptions for him, but this student here got 7 out of 10 that says, you know, what your understanding of Adam needs reviewing and also of organizing elements needs reviewing. And you can decide what, what does that mean, like do they have to give a perfect score to be excellent or review, and you can change those parameters as you want. Um, topic score breakdown. Uh, I'm coming to the end of this. Shows how you can, for example, look at patterns with specific lessons. Like, for example, since my quiz here was over three lessons, it actually breaks down the quiz into those subtopics. So, you know, looking at this, just kind of at first glance, it looks like most students got introduction to the atom okay. But it looks like organizing the elements um, a little bit uh, not so much. I might want to, you know, kind of touch on that a little bit. And then you see, like, what the totals are. Um, 
for those students. The last thing, and I think this is really cool, and this is a feature that uh, I used to use Autocrat for, which is I have like a spreadsheet. I'd make these documents with merge tags. It does it for you automatically. And so, you know, I can just click on this. Uh, should we click a student right here? And this has been emailed to the student and also saved to their drive. And wh what I like about electronic assessments is it's easy to collate them, but you know, you need some time to, you know, go over them. And students, they might like to, to have something like, you know, referencing for later. So this student has a, has a document, and there's some feedback, and I say, you know, hey, this looks good, this looks good, whatever, and you might want to review this. And then there's some review questions that, you know, following the next class, like, we'll kind of review upon. So this is what, um, this. oh, sorry, the last two options, I'm not going to go into, but if you want to print these out uh, for some, like, like, tangible paper copies, you guys can use that. But um, this is Super Quiz in a nutshell, and I'm just going to walk you through how you would actually do this. So if I go to my drive, and then I go down to new, and then I make like a new uh, Google form, um, I'll get that. But in the interest of time, what I've done is I've already created one. So I've done this, and I have a, a Super Form quiz, and um, I, the first thing is you also need to have is you need to have your teacher's name and also your name. And for the teacher's name. Um, just to edit that, I think that choose from a list is great, and this is also great if you're developing assessments for multiple teachers that are maybe using the same assessment. And then also for your name, you don't you want like just a text response because it's an open-ended response. And there's a sample quiz on uh, homonyms there, there, and there, and uh, right or right. And for this also, you need to put section headers in. So put a section header for this and up here, and after you make that, you can just drag it up, and so it's all configured correctly. Now that I've done that, um, uh, here's my su summary of responses. I'm just going to go and I'm going to go look at the live form. And here it is right here. And it looks pretty good. So I want to share this with some students. And what I do is, well, to, to improve, or to, I'm sorry, to install Super Quiz, you go to add on. Since I've already installed it, it's already there. But if you've never installed it before, just click get add ons. And then search for add-ons here. It's called Super Quiz. You can also scroll down for it if you want to. Since I've already installed this too, this just says manage, but if you've never installed, you're just gonna hit connect and it might ask, like, do you, you know, can I have permission to access your drive and look at that? And then you'll just say yes. So now that I've done that, um, I'm just gonna uh, install this. Basically, I've already installed it on this one here, but um, you're gonna go to main menu and it'll just walk you through the process of how to get this installed. And there is a certain way that does need to be configured. If you just follow the steps, it should be pretty cool. So it says the tab with your responses must be under Form Responses 1. And if you look down here, uh, it's right down here. So the tab says Form Responses 1, so that looks pretty good. Uh, the correct answers to questions should be entered in row 2. So I'm just going to take this myself. Um, Mr. J, my name is Mr. Johnson. Uh, I want to go to the mall over there. I want to take a right turn down the road and I'm going to hit submit. So after I do that, um, my responses should trickle in here. Now this next part number three is important. It says the first four columns must be arranged like this, so timestamp. So A must be timestamp and it is, so no problem. Uh, B is your email. So if you look at that, if you edit, if you ever edit Google Forms and you make changes, like you delete questions, you're going to find the old questions are up here. You can just delete those columns. But in this case, I'm just going to take this column and I'm just going to drag it over there. So now my username column is over here in column B. So that looks good. Um, I don't really need an email because I'm in a Google Apps domain at our school here. And then uh, column C should be what's your name. So. I'm just going to grab this column here, move this over to column C. And finally, the last thing is uh, who's your teacher? Or what's your teacher's name? Sorry. And bada bing. Okay. So now that I've got that, um, it's going to ask me, do you want to create tabs? And also, if you want information on setup here, there's a great video here. Um, I tried to share it and embed it, but I couldn't because I think it's a private, privately listed video. But now that I've done that, I'm going to hit create tabs. And um, unfortunately, this process takes a little bit of time. It takes about two minutes. So what, what I'm going to um, just kind of talk about is that what I think is awesome about this is, and I'll kind of go back on how we can use this in some of the old Google functions to, to work on this. And I'm just going to check in on this periodically, but it seems like it's still working. But what you'll see is also, as, as I check in on this, little tabs will come popping in at the bottom. And anyways, 
coming back to this, what I, what I really like about this, um, I'm just going to close my quiz here, is that the, the document email configuration I think is just so powerful. And before, there was a great script called Formule that I used to use that you could set up um, for email triggers. And you can also set this up to where if you want these documents sent to the students, as soon as they submit the form, you can do that. Uh, otherwise, you can wait till they all come in and then send them. Like, for example, if you don't want to know, like some students to know the answers before assessments, maybe you want to wait till the entire class has submitted those, um, you can just submit at the very end. And once it's also done, you can also open a parent super, um, super quiz and just go to um, the tab information, and that's really, really descriptive. So if you look down here, it's, it's still taking a little while. My right or wrong tab has already been put in here, so it'll take a little bit longer. But what I'm going to do is just take you back uh, to the very beginning because this is where my, my, my um, mine is going. And so, first of all, the right and wrong, and this is so easy, it just says this is the simplest and gives the students a one or a zero if they got it correct. Uh, and then the class results tab down below here, it says, uh, assuming you have who's your main teacher in column D, this gives you a breakdown per class. And this is also nice if you're teaching, uh, if you have, as I said, like, you know, one teacher is teaching one class and one another. Because right now, since it's, I've only given this assessment, um, it only has my name, but for example, students that have, for example, my, my, my co-teacher, it might show up there. We might see that, wow, look at this, you know, like, um, she might say, wow, Gary, you taught this really well. My kids didn't get this. You know, what did you do to teach that? And I likewise might say, wow, my students really struggled with this, with this question, but your kids did really well. So, you know, what did you do? So I think that's a great way to help kind of co-teach and deprivatize what happens in the classroom. Um, the incorrect students, as you see here, this gives a list of students who have gotten each question incorrect, and this is really good for target intervention. And those are obviously, like I showed them before, just a big list of students and who got what questions um, incorrect. Um, and uh, so have we gotten to this step yet? Oh, copy class results. Yeah, it takes a little bit of time. But um, the auto feedback configuration, and it says this is where the magic begins. Filling out these cells provide personalized quality feedback for each student. And when I first saw this, I was a little put off by how uh, colorful it was. <laughs> there was so much. But then as I just started looking at it, I said, actually, it's not that, it's not that difficult. And at the very end, too, when you click on response feedback, you'll, you'll know if it's figured, configured correctly. So, you know, I'm just going to go back here. And here's the important thing. You cannot en edit anything in yellow. So all these things that say specific feedback topic, just leave these as they are. Uh, when you first open this up, there's actually an example from the example tutorial on some math questions. And you'll see that as kind of an example of which you can work. Um, what I also like is that you want to just give like generic feedback. Like maybe you don't want to take the time to write like these things out right here. But you want to give like generic feedback if you do say yes, I'll just, you know, like review your notes or something like that. Let's see how this is coming. Okay, looks like it's almost so all tabs are loaded. So as you see, I've already entered this myself, and since no one else has done this quiz, I think that you're going to find this is um, pretty bland. There's uh, no right or wrong questions. But what I think is interesting is to go to the auto feedback configuration, because I can show you what it looks like from this perspective, and also the perspective on my first one that's already filled in. So I've already changed this to reflect what my quiz was about, but if you see here, you know, this is about arithmetic. So you would just change that. In this case, um, what I did was mine was about three different topics and just into introduction to the atom organizing the elements metals. And so you can change those section headers and also put how many questions were in those. So I had like, for example, four, three, and three. So I had 10 questions total. And you can also play around with what, what sort of like level or grade you want to give this. Like some of my kids don't like, you know, the, the, the concept of grades and it really puts them off. And since this is a formative assessment, I, I really want to try to get off on you know, get away from like the sort of letter grade, but trying to get them to feel like, you know, how are they progressing as learners? And so I've used some sort of more standards based language here that um, what well, I think kind of soften the blow if the students did so, didn't do so well. Um, if you want to give some follow up questions, um, you put these right over here. Also, likewise, oh, sorry, um, you'll see here that following some instructions like this, this teacher for adding says use a number line to help you draw a rectangle and then it gives you some follow-up questions that maybe in, in small groups or pairs they can work on together and so um, this is super quiz in a nutshell and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thanks a lot